Love catching up with the blogger to the nation, Daily Telegraph uh, columnist uh, Tim Blair. Every Tuesday in the Wimmera there, Tim, tell me, uh, in the wonderful Wimmera, do you have a community mm. battery? Uh, such things wouldn't survive a long time here. Perhaps we, we did at one point, but um, most of the residents here are armed, Chris. <laughs> So, so I mean, perhaps it wouldn't be wouldn't be survivable. I guess the community battery is where the government stumps up millions of dollars and puts a big battery there, so that all your mm. solar panels and it can charge it. And then when there's uh, no sun, you can all you can all draw down the battery for your well, ju- for your air the, That'll go well. Well, judging by the sounds in my neighbourhood, I think we've got some community battery chickens, but uh, I think that's an altogether different source of energy, or when a different you, source of protein, rather. When you're trying to you know, run your air conditioner, you'd be screaming at your next-door neighbour for using <laughs> their electric lawnmower. Anyway, yeah, Chris Bowen unveiled another mm. one uh, today in inner city uh, Sydney, uh, and he got the kids to help out. Have a look at this wonderful bit, wonderful bit of uh, infrastructure launching. Now we're going to turn this, this baby on. Can you help us do that? Yeah. All right. There we go. Now, you reckon we turn, we press the red button or the green button? Uh, the green button. I'd go green button. All right. You're going to help me? Get your fingers ready. Where's Sally's finger? You're going to come up and help too, Sally. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. That's a great day. Now, Tim, apparently this thing costs half a million bucks. <laughs> and now that's on top of, that's the out of their tax dollars, on top of, of course, all the higher electricity charges and stuff. We're just throwing this money good after bad, day in and day out. There's one of these in Victoria. They reckon it'll take 100 <laughs> years to pay for itself. I love um, I love the reaction from the children. Like, what, what, what must they be thinking, that they've got this incredibly fancy thing, you know, the big important man from Canberra's there to help them push a button, and all it does is make a noise like a clumsy rodeo... A, sorry, a clumsy roadie loading drums at the end of a really crappy RSL gig. It just made this big bong sound, like... <laughs> and, and the only interested person here is the oldest. <laughs> it's like, like, these kids have all got, you know, they've all got smartphones, they've all got toys, they've all got, like, the most incredibly exotic stuff... And Chris Bowen's trying to get them excited by pushing a stupid button. Yeah, all that money and it doesn't even have a touch screen. They're back to pushing <laughs> buttons like in the old days when mum and dad had a, a home phone. It is, uh, it is such a worry. Now, there's some good news, though. I know you're a great lover mm. of electric vehicles. Uh, Volkswagen, oh, yeah. Volkswagen are saying apparently sales are heading down. Like all the virtue signalers have got one already and uh, not too many others are buying them. There was a great first wave of these sort of things, and um, you know Tesla uh, certainly uh, became the, the biggest seller. But Tesla always, always will hold on to the advantage of being the first to the market, and so it's like Biro's being pent or or Duco being paint. When people think of electric cars, they think of Teslas. So if people want to get uh, another brand and still get some of the some of the cool, you know, social justice warrior points. Well, you're not going to do it when you own a Volkswagen because you've got to then tell people that it's an electric Volkswagen. If you just say you've got a Tesla, everyone's like, oh, you yeah. know, the guy's got a lot of money. Yeah, Volkswagen should have called themselves a Hoover or something. <laughs> hey, um, I don't know whether you caught the top of the program, but this Danish artist, Jens Hunning, and uh, he took the yeah. money and run. The guy's a genius. He's, he's played them at their own game. This is the second best uh, arts uh, grant story in history. The best one is an Australian bloke who, uh, about 10 years ago, he got an arts grant worth $20,000 and he converted that grant into $20,000. It was just a pile of notes, 20 grand's worth, in a little plastic box that he exhibited. <laughs> and then he auctioned it for $21,000. <laughs> Seriously, this guy was a Sydney artist. He actually made money on the grant. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, a Sydney artist or a banker, whichever, a loan shark, <laughs> he's pretty much covered them all. Thanks for joining yep. us, Tim. Appreciate it. Good on you, mate. All good.